In this video, I want to cover PowerPoint uh, custom animation. Now, it's just called animations now, but uh, I've always referred to it as custom animation. Uh, transitioning from slide to slide deals with transi transitions here, but uh, when you want to custom animate, so that means animating uh, the content within the slides themselves. Um, in transitions, I mentioned you'd want to work in slide sort of view. Uh, when I'm working with custom animations, I would definitely ask to see the animation pane which is right here. And this will summarize everything that's going on in, in far, as so far as custom animation in your presentation. So anything and everything that's in a slide can be animated. So when animating a presentation, I'll start first slide, first thing, and work your way down in a logical way. Because as you insert them, that's the order in which things will be animated in your presentation. So keep that in mind so you don't have to move things around later. So you probably want to start with this title. Now, so many choices. So there's entrance, so how something is going to come in. Now they give you this little menu here, but understand there are more entrance effects, many more, to choose from. So if you want to see the whole menu, and if you want to see what these look like, go crazy. Check them out, all right? Uh, and it's by doing that that I was able to find my personal favorite, the bounce. So now I've animated the first slide so that my title comes in with a bounce. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want that. I don't need it. So now that's ready to go. And now I would go to the next presentation and you would determine how you want things to go. Now, you can have things not only enter a certain way, but once it's in, you can then ask it to have some kind of an emphasis. And I'm just gonna go with something real simple. Okay. Um, which probably isn't all that simple. Let's do that instead. There we go. So now this has got two. Uh, did I give this one an entrance? No, I didn't. So this just has an emphasis. It doesn't have an entrance. So if I don't like this, I can remove it. And I can start over and I can say, all right, I want an entrance for this. So I'm going to have it bounce in. And I, I believe I can add an emphasis to this as well. I'll just try. And oh, they have, uh, um, all of these have options. The options again will change depending on what it is you're doing. So I just wanna see, can I now add an emphasis to this? No, I believe I've replaced the entrance with emphasis. Some of these things will allow two things, some of them won't. So by, by adding, by putting in emphasis, I changed it. Okay, so let's try this now. I can have this come in. Now fly in allows you many, many choices in effect options here from many, many directions. And I'm just wondering now if I can add an emphasis as well to this one. So now in this particular slide, I have it. All right, so I have my title coming in and then, all right. So it appears as though you're only able to give it one, which I guess is good. It'll prevent you from doing all kinds of crazy stuff to it. Now, I'm gonna see whether I can have this exit as well. So if I ask this to exit, No, it appears as though you're only able to add one effect to one thing. All right, so that simplifies things, good. So you can have it either enter, have an emphasis, or exit. And I believe with eg exit though, let's say here I have it exiting. Uh, I'm gonna go How about exit bounce? Okay. And I want to see if I can have some kind of a motion path for that. So many motion paths. It's crazy. So I'm just going to try that. And do a preview.
All right, so there you go. So it, in doing that, I got rid of the exit. So apparently you have a choice. You can either have it enter, have an emphasis, have it exit, or have it move from one place to another. You can't apply more than one thing to an object. So there is a lesson learned. And in watching that, of course, you've seen how you can change something, right? Even though I set that, I can quickly and easily now say, well, I don't want any of those. I want to go instead to just an appear. So I want to change the animation of this to just an appear. And quickly and easily, it changed it to that. Your preview, as I showed you, you just come here and you get a preview. Uh, if you want to remove it altogether, you come here and you remove it. If I like this, if I like what I did here, all right, um, you have a new feature, which is really cool. And, and, you know, oftentimes if you're animating a presentation, you're going to want to repeat the same kind of custom animation from slide to slide so that you have some consistency. So once you've found something that you really like, I'm not promoting the balance. I just really like the balance. Um, once you found something you really like, you can select that area right here and go to, yep, yeah, that's right, Animation Painter. The same thing as Format Painter. So if I single click, I can paint one thing. If I double click, I can go to different slides and apply it to different things. Huge time saver. Love that. Okay. So your animation painter is new. Kind of neat. Um, I've been working in order, which is logical, right? If for some reason uh, here I animated this before I animated this Oh, my format painter is still on. <laughs> so I animated the text before I animated this. That's wrong, right? I don't want that to happen. I'm going to bring this down. I want to see everything here. And uh, this needs to go up, right? It needs to come before. So I need to move this up here so that this goes first and then these come in. So I simply dragged that like that. Okay, so I want to bring it to the bottom. I can, but I don't want it to the bottom. I don't want it to be the fifth thing. I want it to be the first thing. You can also do this and it's bringing it up one by one. It's really important that you know how to do that. Chances are that'll be on, on some kind of test somewhere. Um, and same thing here. I went ahead and I animated that, but I want this to come in with, uh, I'll just gotta keep picking on bounce here. But now these are these are backwards, right? So now I've got my title coming in after that. That's not right, so I gotta bring that up. So that's how you change the order of things. Really important that you understand that. The motion paths, I, 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 I wanna just talk about that for a minute. Okay, so I went ahead and I inserted this butterfly and I want it to fly around my page a little bit. So perfect time to bring in a motion path. So here I would go into motion paths and I want it to fly around, right? And I haven't really thought this through and I hope not to make anybody dizzy, but I'm just gonna go, let's see with a zigzag. Oh, no, that's not good. Spiral, spiral, sure, I'm gonna hit okay. All right, and what you can do is you can move this, of course, so that the spiral goes somewhere else, right? But what I'm going to do instead is you can grow it so that the spiral takes place in a larger area. And you can edit these points. It's crazy how many choices you have for things that you can do, but you can move these things around as well, depending on the path that you have. So you may be asked to grow, to size, to change. And if you change where your original object is, that'll change where the path begins. So now, uh, if I do this, it's showing me what that's doing. Okay. Uh, duration, I could probably slow this down. Oh, I'm speeding it up. And then go. There you go. So that's how you can edit and play with your motion paths. Relatively new. I don't know how much of that you want to do, 
but just understand that that is available to you. Neat little feature. Not sure if I mentioned the fact that you can rotate your motion path as well. Now I've added things to this slide just so that you can see a little bit more about your animation pane. It's of course showing you the order in which things are going to be animated, which is critically important. Uh, the green stars simply uh, refer to entrance effects. The, uh, the red ones uh, have to do with exit. If I had uh, an emphasis, it would be a, a, a yellow star. And these here represent what kind of a motion path you have for something. So that's just a little legend telling you what's going on. They're all on mouse click. And here it's showing you how long they're taking. They're all taking two seconds. If you were to, if you want to increase the, the timing of one, you see how the, this line is growing here? So this, this little line is showing you how long this effect is going to take. Okay, so I'm going to bring that back so it's the same. And if I wanted this to be longer, I can make it last longer. And you have a zoom feature here, which allows you to see a little bit better. All right, so you can zoom in and zoom out by just simply doing this. And it shows you. So this animation pane, uh, I, I like it because it's showing you only what's on this slide. So when you click on the next slide, you get different things on your animation pane. Very easy for you to determine what's going on on this particular slide. Okay, so I'm contradicting myself from what I said earlier. You can have more than one animation on an object. However, you can't do it from fixing it up here. You have to go to add animation here. So I, I, would, I just successfully added an animation to this title. So I added an emphasis. However, because I've done it so late, it added it at the very end, so it's not going to happen until it's done. So I can move this up so that it has an emphasis after it's come in. So now if I play this, it came in and it did a little, let me just start here. So it comes in and then it has a flashing emphasis. So you can have several things happening to one object. You have to use this add animation feature here. I'm glad I found that. Trigger here can be on the click of one of the objects, all right? Um, or you can just leave it so that it just happens on click. Um, do, 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 do. So yeah, here start on click is what you'd want to do. You have even more options, believe it or not, for everything. Um, so if I want to take a look at this some more, I can go to effect options here. So start on click. Start with previous means that if you have two things animated and you want them to come in together, start with previous would have them come in at the same time. If you had two pictures, let's say you animated one, when you go to animate the other, if you ask it to start with previous, they'll start at the same time. They'll come in at the same time or whatever animation you have will happen at the same time. Most of the time it's start with previous or after previous, sorry. Effect options, lots of them here, okay? Once again, you can add sound. I, I don't recommend that you add too much sound because it could just get plain annoying. Um, you can have it, you can have it dim afterwards. You can have it hide. This is really important here, that you, it's important you understand that this. Now, most of the time, you're going to have the entire sentence come in together. If you do it by word, once again, it can get old in a hurry. By letter would just be, unless it's one word that you're bringing in one letter at a time. Other than that, I don't recommend that you do that, but it's important that you know that you have these options, all right? So these options do exist. So if they're asking you to custom animate the text so that it comes in one letter or one word at a time, this is where you do it. The timing, once again, I realize there are several places to find the same things, but you can have it set here with certain timing. And once again, as one object is probably good. So that's that's that. Uh, but I want to go back here and understand that you have timing here once again, right? And the ability to remove. I realize there are many, many options here. Uh, I believe I've gone over all of them. 